So Tom, here you are in the role of Max Rokotensky, following in the footsteps of Mel Gibson, one of his defining roles, I would say. Were you ever intimidated uh, by the prospect of playing Max, or were you always confident you could make it your own? Um, I'm always intimidated, and I'm, I'm never confident that I can make anything my own, to be fair. Um, it's just, uh, but there's a, um, I think there's a, a, a practical element to, to uh, there's a much more pragmatic answer to what you're, you're asking. Um, when an opportunity came, uh, comes up, or when this opportunity came up to play uh, Mad Max, immediately, um, for me, there was no argument in who Mad Max is related entirely to Mel Gibson. Mel, Mel Gibson is Mad Max, and that's it, it's unequivocal. And there's a huge fan base that support uh, the original Mad Max trilogy, and obviously it is, as you say, um, Mel Gibson's as well, a defining, iconic character. So. There's no point in trying to step into someone's shoes or fill a void or try to do something better than or create or, or anything like that whatsoever. I think the saving um, uh, and practical um, <coughs> side to that for appeasing any essence of trying to like, be of any ego in trying to do better or trying to do something is the fact that George Miller created Mad Max and asked me to come out on this foray with him to play his new Mad Max. So that abated any sense of ego in, uh, for me or concern or intimidation. And just to simply do what George asked me to do, which is to play a very small cog in a huge, huge machine. Um, right, we should talk about the stunts in this film. Uh, they're incredible. I feel as though this is one of the first films I've seen that has sustained action throughout. Um, how did that affect your working relationship? Well, yeah, it's, a, it's an action film from start to finish, yeah, so, uh, so I had uh, a lot to do with the rehearsal process and, and uh, really close, uh, worked closely with the, the rigging team and the action unit director, Guy Norris, and uh, we, we, would, we would go through the process and iron out all the kinks of different uh, gags and wire rigs and uh, make sure everything was running smoothly and then get Tom involved. And uh, Tom was great because he, he really gave me the... Uh, <clears throat> the intel for where the character was at any given moment in any given scene. So we work closely in that respect and of course trying to uh, not let the audience in and see the switch on when, when it was Tom and when it was myself. Um, and of course the film's going to be playing out of competition at Cannes very shortly. Um, I think you've been before Tom with Lawless but what does that mean for a big franchise film like this to be associated with the festival? Oh, do you know I'm not, I'm not, I'm <clears throat> I'm not a big um Cinephile, so I'm not really aware of what that means to those of you out there who are clearly you know, more into films than I am, um, because I just love acting. But at the end of the day, from what I gather, is that uh, Cannes is a, is a, is a, is a very, it, it's a, it is an event, is a festival event which is about filmmaking, and, it's, and for a, a, a big blockbuster to play at Cannes is a huge, um, it's like an honour in many ways and also quite an unheard of thing and it's, that's why it's out of competition I suppose as well as the fact that it's playing in Los Angeles this week. There you go, I think you've said enough there. <laughs> Chats, pleasure to speak with you. You too. Cheers.